People who escaped the Twin Towers on September 11th all seem to have something in common besides Wall Street. They wonder, why me? Why am I still here when thousands of others died? One of those, the lucky ones, sat down with me at his home in Naples. The New York skyline before September 11th, 2001. Lady Liberty, the symbol of our freedom, and the Twin Towers, symbols of American economic power. And at the heart of it, thousands of traders like Rob Riley, who got to work at 7 a.m. Probably the most beautiful day we've had in a long time. White puffy clouds, bright blue skies. His offices were on the 25th and 26th floors of the first tower hit. He remembers feeling the building sway. And when you looked out the window, all you saw was it looked, it was coming down so slow, like confetti, just like this. But it was huge pieces of the building, papers that were in offices, books. Bankers and brokers, they have gut instincts that they act on. Riley had a split second decision to make stay or go. Looking back, that may seem simple to us, but it wasn't. Not in the cutthroat world of Wall Street. When we had fire drills in the World Trade Center, we wouldn't leave. Because our customer would say, where were you? If I told him we were having a fire drill, he'd be like, great, it just cost me $7 million, $10 million. Riley remembers seeing firefighters taking the stairs up as he and many others were taking the stairs down to safety. He struggled so hard to bring himself to say the words, to tell me about the worst thing I have ever heard and he has ever witnessed. <clears throat> when we got across to the other side and you looked up and you saw those holes and the flames and then, <clears throat> sorry. Take your time. People. <clears throat> Sorry, <clears throat> waving towers with help. Please help. They're stranded. They're stuck. Then you start looking up, and you're in amazement. You're like, "What was that?" And something. Then you see it again. You're like, "What?" And then you realize it's people jumping. <clears throat> At one point, four people held hands and jumped. How? how hot it had to be to know that you're jumping to your death. You're, let's go, I love you, jump. Because you're gonna get scorched or burned up there. <clears throat> and then you could hear this sound that you'll never forget the smells and the sounds of that day. <laughs> and they still overwhelm his senses 20 years later. So does the question his son asked his wife that day. My son asked her, is daddy dead? Um, and at that point, she didn't know yet. New York went into lockdown. The bridges and tunnels were closed, but by some miracle, the subway was still running. Came up the subway stairs, and you can still see the smoke rising in the air. We start walking across the bridge, and a woman just stopped and she said, you guys going across, get in. And we just jumped in a stranger's car and she drove us to the other side of the bridge. Riley doesn't hold on to very many mementos from that day. Rosary beads and all the major newspapers from September 12th. By September 13th, his firm had already moved into temporary quarters. And on Monday, September 17th, Wall Street reopened with many of the stock traders among the missing. Riley guesses he went to 30 to 50 memorials. So these memorials we'd go to, they would just be pictures of all our friends hanging around. Little children running around, sometimes a, a wife who was still pregnant. It was surreal. No one had a body to bury. No one found anyone. Wall Street, is a, the brokerage and the trading, they were fraternity. So it was, imagine these are all your fraternity brothers. It took him up until just a few years ago to visit the National 9-11 Memorial. He took his youngest son, who wasn't even born on 9-11. A lot has happened in those 20 years. Kids' graduations, retirement, moving to Florida. But the memories of that day never fade. Is it something you try to push out of your mind, or do you allow yourself to think about it? No, I, I, I think when you first call me, um, 
to talk about would I be willing to talk in this about 9-11 and my first thought is a hundred percent because I never want to forget that day ever I don't want <clears throat> if you allow yourself to forget it then it goes away if you allow yourself to feel the pain of that day it'll it'll instill inherent thoughts and feelings in you that you want the country to feel. What can you say, uh, you know? I, I, there are no words, I mean, yeah. he, what he said just... I think if we can take anything away from it, first of all, um, we just commend him for his courage for, for speaking with us, but um, it's, it's empathy. And, and like he said, for the country to, to feel that empathy by, by hearing what one person went through. And to keep hearing it so yeah. that, it, like he said, it's fresh and it's always there. Yep. Wow.